Welcome everyone, Samurai Revolution here, and today we're going to show you how to make these pillarless walls. Uh, it's an absolute game changer. We're going to go through all the pros and cons. And I have Didrellis here joining in with me. He uh, famously made them in the Asian dynasties, uh, more importantly on Wars of Liberty, which is what he's known for. Um, and now we're going to bring it to Definitive Edition. We're going to give you guys a full tutorial on why these are, uh, I would say, essential um, and you're never going to want to go back after today's video. So welcome, my friend, and thanks for doing this. Hello, thanks for having me. Uh, we've had this going on for quite a while now. Um, so pillarless walls, finally in the definitive edition. Uh, there are some small changes. So if you already know a few things about pillar, pillarless walls from the base game, uh, it's not all that different, but just slight changes that uh, we'll mention later on in the video. But uh, for all of those wanting to learn how to make the pillarless walls, uh, the first thing you really, really, really must take into note is hotkeys. Uh, so without hotkeys, this technique becomes a lot more uh, time consuming and just difficult in general. So let's just jump into the hotkeys. Uh, if we go to settings, options, and into hotkeys. So. First thing you want to maybe do, this is not very essential, but in general game hotkeys, uh, if we look at delete selected units, um, it's normally select, um, set as delete, but you know, your hand is usually on the left side of your keyboard and delete is just so far away. You might want to set it to something else. I personally use my middle mouse button to just um, click it down and delete everything. And other than that, we have to go to find unit hotkeys on the left side for the most essential hotkey for this entire tutorial. Uh, so we have to scroll down a bit and find the option called find all of selected type. Now, uh, without this, it becomes really difficult because you have to manually select all your pillars as well if you don't use hotkeys at all. Uh, which just makes you spend maybe two minutes of time when you would normally just stretch a wall and just you know be be done with it. Uh, I personally use Q for this. Um, I believe Samurai Revolution he uses C. Got that right? Well, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, you got it right. So it's just anything really, anything you want that doesn't override with other hotkeys. That's fine. Whatever you're comfortable with. And then the general idea is um, if you actually want to demonstrate on how to build it, uh, that's the most essential before we get into the pros and cons, I'd say. Let's do it. I do want to say that I don't have the confidence of putting my delete key inches from my fingers. So. <laughs> it still asks you Power if you, to you want to delete everything, so it's fine. Oh, I would, I would mess it up somehow. Uh, but if you have a single yeah. unit selected, it does instantly delete it, so be careful. Yeah. Uh, I... So the biggest thing, uh, I'll, I'll show you how to make it real quick. So the biggest thing, and you always stress this, is making two at a time. Um, and reason is, is so you're trying to make it so these walls are at full length. Uh, so you can see here, like if I have it like this, they are not quite, that's not full length. Um, but you want to have full stretch. And then when you go back a little bit, you find this in between. You want to find it just as it makes the, the little longest snap. stretch. Yeah, that little snap. Little snap, and then you select the pillar, and it'll delete all of them, and then she'll make the wall. Yeah. Uh, and so you can just tune this together if you can kind of go quicker once you get used to it, um, of pairing them together, and you can go around certain segments as needed. Delete that, and then you got nice and clean. Um, so yeah, there's a little quick tutorial on that. Yeah, and uh, I really stress that uh, making them at two at a time, uh, because looking at it single wise, it can get a bit more awkward and just fail more often. And for the second one, you have that visual um, guide, I'd say, when it just snaps. Uh, but you gotta be really careful not to stretch your walls too much when you. Uh, so you don't want to pull any more than the snap, which we will demonstrate a reason as to why you shouldn't do that later on. Uh, but, you know, let's get right into the pros and cons. Let's start with the pros. So if we go up to the Northern TC, uh, you'll see that one wall 
Um, that wall is made in the pillarless format, so it's not even the fully stretched version. You will see that it's about, you know, just three and a half or like four pillars. And you gotta remember that walls cost the same. So you're, you're giving five wood for the large wall, and then you're giving just 20 wood for those four pillars. So it's really not resource effective. And it's also not good in terms of villager time either, because you would not only have to spend all that wood to make the extra pillars, but your villager would also have to construct each and every one of those pillars, uh, which is you know just not great, if, especially in the case of a rush, because you want your walls to come up as soon as possible. And you know what would be worse than building pillars when the hussars are already in. <laughs> so for this portion, there were some very interesting changes to the Defensive Edition, and we made an entire separate video to cover these. The wall siege is very interesting in this game, uh, but I'm going to put our general conclusions right after this. Uh, but there are some very interesting wall sieges. We came to the conclusion that was basically uh, the same. There isn't much of a difference in the way these uh, two designs siege. Uh, there's a really weird splash siege that applies in this game, so we decided they're generally the same. Man. <laughs> That's way worse. All right, so let's continue on. Let's let's talk about the other pros and cons kind of thing. Um, I, it looks like to me that it's about the same. Like it looks like it's generally about the same. A huge gap in the wall comes undone. Maybe with the pillar list, it's slightly bigger, but I mean, still you have way more resources being used with the pillared walls, anyways. So, all right. So one of the pros with having pillarless walls uh, is for when you actually have gates. So if we go over to the skirmishers with the stable here, um, you'll see that if I go through the pillarless walls, uh, the gates don't actually count as an obstacle. So the sides of the gate aren't actually walls. So you can kind of just literally ghost through them. But this isn't the same for the pillar walls. So if you're trying to go through, so pay attention how some skirmishers are already trying to go around, and then you'll get this really weird rotation. So the game does this by default. Pathfinding in Age of Empires is famous for a reason. <laughs> and uh, it's, it, it's just not good with pillar walls. Uh, so, as you see, instead of just going out in parallel formation, you have pretty much this chunk of skirmishers that rotate around. So, if you actually bring your hussars here, maybe. Uh, oh, so, here they come. so, we demonstrate a little bit of a snare. So when you get that rotation in the snare, the rotation doesn't even happen in slow motion. Your skirmishers literally just pop out. Oh, without firing. So we're getting caught. Just attack, yeah. So we're trying to run away. But then they do this weird rotation, right? And now you got to get these guys out of the thing again. So even if they don't die, they'll still take extra damage. And, you know, a falcon that hit later on might just delete another unit, which is not what you want. And it's just awkward. If you, if it's an early game snare when you only have 10 units, and then, say, three more skirmishers kind of just go out your walls, that's not good. So in this scenario, I can just kind of just run away from the walls. Yeah, there we go. And there is no um, getting stuck to the wall. We'll even get, we'll even get snared now. Uh, do, of course, ignore the already damaged skirmishers. But the idea is you can just run out. All right. So that's good, uh, especially in treaty scenarios, I guess, when you really need your massive units out. And the early game, as mentioned, when every unit counts. Um, but if we go over to the market on the far side of the map, you got to be really careful when building your walls. Because um, if you stretch it too much, or if you don't wait for the snap, uh, this is what the result. So if you don't wait for the snap while building two at a time, you'll get this weird small wall and a larger wall. And if you stretch too much, you'll get uh, the wall where your red coats just passed. And as you can see, why why do you even have those walls at this point? You know, just it's just uh, useless. Uh, your opponent can just walk in, and in the early game, it's going to be a hussar raid. So you're just going to have wasted all that wood. Uh, maybe you'd even have chopped wood for the wall. So just a lot of villagers seconds lost also building the wall. So um, uh, that is why 
it is important to practice this skill uh, because at times the cons can outweigh the pros in the sense that um, you're building a better wall. It's more cost effective, time effective, but if you if you fail it, you literally don't have a wall. So <laughs> yeah, gotta be careful with that. All right, so a quick tip, we'll go from the market again. I'll just restart. So a quick tip while building uh, pillarless walls, and let's say you can see the prefab, right, like this. Does the prefab show for you? Yes. All right. So um, let's delete the pillars really quick. So um, you kind of want to have your villager build the prefabs a bit later on because uh, in the E, what we've noticed is that walls cannot um, build over each other. So I'll do another quick example here. So normally in the game, you could literally build walls inside other walls in the original game. But say if I try and build a wall through this wall, this is the result. It just ends up doing these really weird pillars. So you don't want to do that. You want to build your walls um, once you have everything laid down like that. So now you can build it through like that, and it will build. But say if this wall was already built, all right, so when you already have the wall built, and you try and finish up this last gap, unfortunately, the issue is that you cannot build over the wall. So you'll end up with these pillars by default. Uh, so, you know, the wall as is is fine. If you don't need to build any more walls, you know, you might as well just keep one pillar. You know, it's not the end of the world if you just keep that pillar. But the issue is, if you're like me, and you're really used to just going Q and delete or whatever your hotkeys are, you will have this gap. So you gotta be really mindful when building around these rough edges, uh, which again adds to the con that uh, it takes a bit more precision and time when building the walls with this technique. So you just gotta really make sure you get the practice in for that. You know, go against the AI, uh, try around weird maps with weird uh, little barricades. You know, just lots of map obstacles, and uh, you know you'll you'll get a hang of it. And uh, if there are already walls or obstacles built, um, the best way to go around it is uh, you can still start your initial pillar inside the wall. So, oh no, DE, don't do this. It's, okay, you, you, you can't really start on top of the wall, you just got to drag it out a bit. And then what you do is kind of just go around. And then these pillars should be safe to delete. We'll try to pass the villager through, and yeah, is not able to pass. Yeah. All right, so when building around edges and native outposts, if you're like me, you're likely to just press your find all units key and delete everything. So um, even if it's a single pillar, if even if it's one exception, sometimes it's not the best idea to keep it, and sometimes you might want to build an extra wall uh, to ensure that uh, your base is safe. Uh, because we've noticed that in DE, as mentioned with the wall, uh, the pillars seem to be taking a lot more precedence. They will want to actually remain on the map. In the base game, you could kind of just build from outside the map towards inside the map, so you could put the pillar outside of the map and then drag it in. But then it seems that in DE, the pillar just wants to enter the map uh, regardless. So you have to be really careful with the edges of the map uh, so an additional wall could be helpful. Uh, well, hopefully that's very helpful, guys. Uh, very thankful to Didrellis for joining in and uh, teaching us his wisdom here. And uh, if you have questions, as always, leave in the comments. We'll try to answer. Uh, we hope this is helpful. See you guys later. Thank you for watching, and uh, good luck with your walls. Make sure to not get raided, and uh, we'll keep in touch with how the DE walls are progressing and update if necessary. Thank you.